Well, we're going down in three, two, one. It's your man, DJ Seiko, back again with another version, another episode of the Fly Guys podcast. This is where we do things on the fly, but we're doing it in such a fly manner. And tonight, we're going to talk about the concept of education, what's wrong with the public school system, if anything's wrong with it. The topic is called F School. <laughs> and in the night, we got a couple of good people with me, my good beloved cousin, Sam. What's good, Sam? How you doing? Man, I'm good. I'm chilling. Yeah. Sure some, oh, some skits that bad. I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Okay. I right, drop that IG and that Twitter handle, bro. Oh, um, let's see. Twitter. I didn't start that one yet. Um, my IG is Sam's Corner 2018. Okay. And back again, and I'm honored. Fall back honored. We have the infamous Crumb Snatcher in the building. What's up, good brethren? Peace and love to the family. Salute Seiko, salute to the brother Sam. Uh, thank you for having me on Fly Guy Podcast with you. I'm your brother Crumb, Crumb underscore, uh, Snatcher underscore on IG. Don't have a Twitter yet. Of course, you can subscribe on uh, YouTube. I got my own URL, uh, youtube.com forward slash Crumb. I'm sorry, forward slash Crumb Snatcher. Got you, got you. And uh, if you don't know, Crumb Snatcher is that super on steroids woke type person. <laughs> yes. So, fair warning, tonight's uh, conversation is not going to be PG, most likely, because we have both Sam and Crumb Snatcher on the line. Um, it might get a little profane, so this is not safe for work, probably. And once again, it's not going to be politically correct, either. All right, so... <laughs> so now with me... <laughs> the reason that we're talking about this is on Good Friday uh, last week, I made the announcement that I'm running for the school board for Virginia Beach City Public Schools in Virginia Beach, Virginia. I'm running for one of the at-large positions. You know, my background is in education. And, you know, somebody asked me, well, what are you going to change to on the board? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Dan Trez only tapping in. What's up? What's up with your brethren? Peace, man. Sorry about that. I almost forgot, man. Wow. <laughs> What's up, What's Mike? Mean, really? Hey, introduce yourself and uh, you know, tell us about your podcast and drop your Twitter and your IG handles. Oh, peace. Um, I'm Dan Trezomi. Um, where my killer tape at is my um podcast. You can check me on the Twitters at Dan Trezomi at Omi's Podcast, and I'm on IG at, at Brother Omi. Omi spelled O M I. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right. So the topic, um, going back to a lyric by KRS-One. KRS-One had a song called uh, Love's Gonna Get You. And oh, wow. <laughs> one of the hot lyrics from Love's Gonna Get You was, I pull about a G a week. He was talking about dealing drugs. I pull about a G a week. He wasn't saying he was dealing drugs. He was painting a portrait. I pull about a G a week. F school. School and I heard Crumb Snatchers say F school in one of his podcasts. And I'm like, whoa, okay. You know, I'm the educator. Dan Trez Omi is another educator. Um, so when you said F school, man, what do you think about Crumb Snatcher? All right. Well, um, thank you so much for allowing me to take the lead on this. So in terms of school, um, we have to understand that um, – if I could put it into a metaphor, uh, when school was created here in America, it was created uh, on a premise of a dog school. What do I mean by that? The first uh, uh, schools w were made for, um, for European or Caucasian students. So when we, as the cat people, integrated into the dog school, we were uh, upset with the curriculum saying that, you know, uh, you know, th they're trying to make us pull over when we want to take cat naps, uh, play with yarn, and so on and so forth. What What am I really saying? All the academia, academia since the um, si since the birth of the public education system has all been uh, based around a certain perspective, um, and we continue to see that today. So. Um, it, in terms of uh, accredited information and academia, uh, the reason the whole system is backwards is, is because it, it's very racist. For instance, if we look at this new Black History Museum that was made in DC, uh, they, they have Nicki Minaj in there. Nicki Minaj is a part of, of, of uh, Black history uh, uh, 
accredited in, uh, 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 information from their perspective teaching us. So when we go into these schools, we often forget that all the information is based on them. And there's nothing wrong with that because we're dealing with perspective. So if you go into a school that, that's, that's created exclusively around them, them, then the perspective is all based on them. That's why we have uh, uh, this narrative of Christopher Columbus discovering America when uh, the reality is Christopher Columbus never set foot on, uh, on American soil. Um, so, you know, the, the perspective in which school is created. And one last point before I pass the mic. Um, the reason school is so flawed is because there's a real uh, sit down and. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, the kids are forced just to sit down and, and, and memorize versus really being engaged to learn something, especially anything based off their natural uh, talents. Mm. You agree with him, Tres? Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. I, I agree. And the school system wasn't, you know, remember that. And I know this is, we're, we're, go, we're going over history again. Um, you know, when our ancestors were brought to the shores, they were not considered people. So, you know, the, the school system was not, you know, it wasn't even created for the Native Americans, uh, for no one else, uh, but for white kids. So he's, he's right. right. He's that on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who had a good experience in school? Anybody? Raise your hand if you did. Was that? If you had a great experience in school, oh, raise your hand. Yeah, I, I had I had a great experience in school. I had a tremendous. I had a. I, I'm not going to sit here and lie and act like that. My teachers didn't have a tremendous. The teachers had a tremendous influence on my life. Don't get me wrong. Um, when I when I talk to my students, I always say to them, I always be like, and I know this sounds crazy. I'm always like, wow, we have a lot of black men in the school, right? Be thankful because in my entire time I was in school, I only had one black teacher. You know, I have one black teacher. So, like, you know, and then that's not even talking about a college experience. Even though my college experience was great, you know, I didn't have that many black professors. Um, I didn't go to HBCU, by the way. I went to a PWI, a, pre, a predominantly white institution. So, um, but, yeah, I, you know, I had a great experience in school. You know, outside of the getting beat up and stuff like that, you know, my, I love going to school and I enjoyed it. So. You said you only had one black teacher? Wow. Mm-hmm. I remember having two, one in middle school and in, actually two, two in middle school and one was the band director. A salute to uh, Mr. Derrickson. He used to play trombone in Earth, Wind and Fire. And then he got off the road and started teaching somehow. Uh, figure that out. Uh, so yeah, the band director and then the, the history teacher. That was it for me in, in middle school and high school. One black male. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Did you guys have any good experience in school? I, I have to say, overall, I had the. I mean, I, I have to admit, I had some really good teachers, especially in elementary school. Um, I wish I had more black male teachers. I'm trying to. I think besides my PE coach for high school. Most of my teachers were predominantly female and predominantly black. That's the case, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, I don't think I had any. I think in the number of male teachers I had, I remember I had like maybe three white male te you know, teachers. Hmm. But you grew up in a D.C. area pretty much, right? Yeah, so... I mean, even though I, I grew up in D.C., you know, it was still back then. It's not like, you know, now we're more like Squirrel City. Back then it was Chocolate City. <laughs> you know, I, we had a lot of, most of my teachers were black. and then, How many of them were men, though? Not many were men. I didn't have a lot of male teachers. It was more female. Okay. So I would have to say, but my... The education I got in elementary school, by the time I got to high school, to be honest, I was already, I had learned most of that stuff. So I wasn't learning stuff like most of the students were. So I have to say overall, my educational experience was, it wasn't bad. It was different, but it wasn't bad. All right, well, Mr. F School, what was your experience like? I mean, because you have, you have a real heavy position on public education. 
This is about to get real deep. Well, and, and, and see, all right, go ahead, go ahead. Question, because when you ask these things, it's like asking, do you have a good parent? Well, you, what are you judging your parent off of? Did you have another parent or you just only had one parent? So you'd be like, well, I guess I had a good parent because you never had another better parent than a fucked up parent that you had. So why, why did we all have a fucked up school experience and we think we had a good one? Because we ain't no shit better. You don't know shit better than the fucked up shit you had. So automatically you go, well, it's not so bad, bitch, because you ain't never had shit more than that. So now when you ask, did I have a good experience? None of us had a good experience because learning cannot happen inside four walls. Keep in mind, when you go to the, 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 the Ivy League college, mm -hmm. Ivy League college, and they say, we're going to make you a doctor, they're going to give you a residency. A residency because they understand you can't learn to be a doctor by looking at a fucking picture of a liver in a book. So now we, uh, 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 at, at, at the university level, it's, it's called field study. At the elementary level, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. inside of the box. They showed your ass a picture and you thought you had a good fucking teacher. Your teacher ain't shit. The teacher won't shit because you didn't go to no field trips. You didn't learn one-on-one, -on -one, hands-on. They taught you from a book they told your ass to memorize. You went home, you did your homework, and you thought you did good. That ain't no goddamn education. Now, this is the thing concerning uh, 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 what we should be expecting. All right. So now, because school is gearing you for two things, you're going to be in... Okay, okay. School. So now you got a fixed day. And uh, 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 it's based on times to work versus as a freelancer, uh, 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 you work the days and the hour that, uh, 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 that, that, that best suits you. Um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, a student or an employee, they do the work they are given and your teacher, uh, 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 I'm sorry, by your teacher or your manager. Um, you, you always look busy. You play it safe. You put your head down and stay out of sight. Uh, 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 wait to be given work. Try to please your teacher or your manager. Don't rock the boat. Let your boss decide uh, uh, what your pay is. Your time is controlled by others. Your life is controlled by others. This is what we've been indoctrinated with, with, with that school. So now when you go to job, you be like, I got a good job. Fuck your job. Nigga, you a slave. What the fuck you mean? I got a good job. I had a good education. H however, they didn't uh, uh, um, um, uh, uh, groom you to be an innovator, but to be an employee. As an innovator, had you really been taught in school, you'd work the days and the hour that suits you best. You choose the work that you do best and you enjoy the most. You're safe. Uh, 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 you're not trying to be busy. You're trying to do what you want to do. You take measured risk based off off off. Off, um, off, off, off your own skill set and, 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 and acumen. You reach out and create the work that you love. You please yourself. So the psyche that has been uh, uh, indoctrinated with uh, 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 in us has led us to believe that we've been educated. In addition to that, you like your education. Bitch, you, 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 you a fucking zombie. You a zombie. And no, they had me in a goddamn SLD classes. They said I had a slow learning disability. I was in the back of the school, not even in the school. I was in a trailer. I rode the short bus, and they made me eat by myself. Fuck that school. So I'm guessing you had a bad experience. <laughs> <laughs> not, not to make light of it. Not to make light of it, but I'm guessing you had a bad experience. So. Absolutely. Wow. We all had bad experiences. We just conditioned to believe we had a good experience because you were inside that classroom and four walls, and that's not a learning condition. That's a prison. Wow. Well, here, here's a question I have for everyone, because I think that sometimes, well, not a question, more like a statement. I think sometimes there's a difference between education and learning. And I think when we go to school, we get an education. I think when you're educated on something, you learn to regurgitate what's being taught to you versus exactly. learning is when, I feel like in school, you know, we see our teacher, they're writing on the board, they're teaching us a math problem. This is how you solve for X, this is how you solve for Y. And I'm like, that's cool. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you notice, a lot of times in life, we get an education, but we don't learn about life. I agree. I we don't learn about the things that we need to do to survive, how to save. And I think it kind of tied into the, the school system thing it also depends on where you grow up. 
the richer your area is, the better the education is, period. And the more access you have to certain things. Now, when it comes to school, schools I feel that are in better, more richer areas, they're taught more life lessons. They do more things. They have more access to learning versus getting an education. If all we do is learn how to regurgitate something, anybody can learn how to repeat something. Hell, my, my niece who's three, she repeats everything I say. I try not to curse around her because I want to learn other words first. I don't want to <laughs> learn profanity just yet. Although I think she knows a few things that I don't. She been around you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that it ties into learning. And I think a lot of school systems, they educate, but we don't teach kids about learning. If I can chime in real quick. Go ahead, Crow. R really quickly, I wanted to, you know, because the brother said he felt, I wanted to cl clarify, that's not a feeling, that's a fact, brother. We call that redlining. A lot of the school's funding is coming from property taxes. So when you do redlining, which I don't know if, if, if we're familiar with this, Seiko, you could probably pull it up, but that was where they would uh, systematically keep blacks out of uh, the suburbs or uh, areas of town that had government funding behind them. Um, where property values were apt to uh, 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 increase. So, oh, okay. So now when you have um, uh, 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 the schools, if you look up what, where the school's funding is coming from, it's coming from property tax. So, okay, okay, okay. That has low property tax and it doesn't have um, uh, uh, d d development the first thing that's gonna suffer as a result of this is the schools. So people who live in Section 8, people who live in these uh, uh, predominantly urban uh, uh, areas are, are uh, uh, through systematic racism, gonna to, going to have a uh, less, oh, I'm sorry, a, I'm sorry, people who live in the suburbs are gonna have a richer learning experience versus children uh, who are vic victims of um, redlining. So again, when we say, did you have a good education? We aren't comparing that to anything. If you look at the education you got to, uh, in, in comparison to your white counterpart who, who, uh, who, who was a, uh, um, a beneficiary of redlining are gonna be two starkly different uh, uh, experiences in terms of education. Please continue. All right, well, you know, uh, use the term redlining. I'm not sure if the term, if that's the term I would use, simply because when I was a real estate agent, we used the term redlining to describe those areas, like this Wikipedia page says, where um, banks didn't loan certain people that look like us, you know, loans, and that prevented us that look like us from going into those areas. But I think it's the same effect. You're saying about the same effect. You're saying that the uh, schools who are in, in neighborhoods that have higher home values have better education. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much your point, right? Right. I saw that when I worked in Portsmouth City Public Schools, man, because Portsmouth City Public Schools at the time, this was like 91, 92, 93. I was there until... Uh, two you, were there for, you were there for like 10 years. Yeah, I was there for 11 years, as a matter of fact. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I remember. Yeah, during that time, man, P-Town had nine public housing complexes in the city. So there were nine areas in the city of Portsmouth, Virginia, where there was no tax revenue. You know, because you didn't pay taxes in a uh, in, in government housing, pretty much, you know what I mean? Right. So, right. nine areas in a city, that just really kind of drained the city. They didn't have the money for the infrastructure, they didn't have the money for the schools, they didn't have the money for public service and other amenities. And it really just kind of drained the city. And so they started slowly gentrifying so they would have the money so they could start putting into the schools and the hospitals and the infrastructure and things of that nature. But I know that during that time piece, there was an area in Portsmouth called Churchland. And Churchland had the higher value homes. And you would cross this bridge and get into Churchland. And the education in Churchland was known to be better. <laughs> I know, a lot, I know a lot of kids that try to, I know a lot of parents that were like, you know, fudging the addresses so they can have their kids go to schools and church. And I remember that. Yep. Yeah. I remember that vividly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So I think Crumb, your, your point, and I said earlier, it's not PC tonight. It's not going to be politically correct. <laughs> <laughs> 
it's definitely going to be rated all because we got Sam and Crumb Snatcher on the line, and Danny's know how known to drop a few as well. <laughs> um, with that being said, you know, we're talking about some of the historical things that have impacted the school system. I guess, you know, running for, and Danny, I don't know if I told you this because you kind of uh, call a little later. On Good Friday, a few days ago, I announced that for the city of Virginia Beach City Public Schools, I'm running for school board. Okay. Yeah, I saw that. I saw the email for that. Congratulations. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's going to be interesting. So if you guys had a chance to change anything in your schools or the schools around you right now, you know, if I, if I could pop you on a school board right now in your area, what would you do different? I, I would like to go first. I would, and, I, and, you know, I don't have the studies for this. Um, hire more black male teachers. Like, really, like, try to recruit, you know, more black men. I think that has, a, you know, just in the school that I work in, it just makes a, such a great impact, um, not only with the students, but also with the parents as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think that is, I think that if I could change anything right now, you know, like, you know, create incentives to hire more black male. Because I know a lot of us are just not going into education. There's not a lot of money in education. I don't knock anybody for going to college, all the, you know, spending all that money. And, and then, you know, you get a job that's really low paying. Um, it's high risk. It's, it's not easy. Um, but um, if I could do that, I could create incentives to hire more black men. That's, if I could do that, like snap my fingers, I would do that right now. I know that's kind of several levels up and down. And it'll probably be outside of your lane. But. That's what I would do if you was to ask me. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. What about you, Sam? If you had a chance yeah. to make a change on the school system, and you're still in the D.C. metro area, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I think for me, it's like, it's one of those things that's hard because I have to go back to, I do like the male teachers. I just want to say something real quick because one of my co-workers and a friend of mine, they're both male teachers. And it's like, I want to see more of that. But what I really want is a moving away from this thing that education makes you smarter and automatically it's like this magic fucking wand that makes your life better, prettier, and happier. And I would like to see overall school systems being the same and no redlining, but I want to see more of kids learning life skills. And that you don't have to get a degree or a PhD. Certain people are good with their hands. Certain people can fix a car, electricians, whatever. They can do different things. I ain't good with that. You give me a spreadsheet, you give me something with formulas and data, I got you on that. But other stuff, that's just not me. But I would like to see kids and a lot of people learn more life skills. All right. What about you, Crum? Well, if I could, uh, you know, kind of piggyback off of Sam, you know, um, being pragmatic, practicality, you know, in school, they helped us memorize how to solve for X. However, we couldn't apply X to our real life, um, you know, and we don't necessarily have to reinvent the wheel. We have a long uh, system. I'm sorry a long history in our relationship with the schools. And we found that at one point in time, those uh, practical applications really helped our community specifically, um, you know, where we had uh, uh, auto shop, uh, you know, plumbing, things like that. Um, and, you know, uh, that, that, that would be at the high school level, but even at the elementary level, you know, um, to, to have that th those field trips where where we get the child you know they say don't think you know think outside the box well that schools that classroom is a box to get the children outside of that particular box instead of seeing a picture of an igneous rock to actually touch an igneous rock you know i guess that would be a foreign concept to uh, our modern day school so to you know to, to, to kind of uh chime off of what sam was saying you know uh bring more pragmatic and practicality back to it you know let's not solve for x let's identify x in our real life you know whether that be those uh those auto body uh, uh, programs or, or, or what have you make it practical again, you know, and, and, and even if we could sprinkle some, you know, how to file taxes in there, that would be awesome. Something I never learned, but something as a American citizen, all of us, you know, have to do at one point in time or how to create a business. We, we see that there's no degree required to create a business, but there's a degree, uh, a degree required to work at that business. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> hold up. What type of rock? Igneous. 
useless information. <laughs> I don't know why I know that. Yo, I thought you said an ignorant rock, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you didn't, you didn't Google, you didn't Google that. <laughs> you didn't Google that, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man, my, well, my thought is, man, I'm really, you know, my background in education, I became a special ed teacher. And because I was a special ed teacher, I really wanted to make sure that all the students had a similar experience and that all the students who were in, you know, in, in the classrooms like Crumb, the, you know, the classrooms that you were in Crumb, I wanted those students to learn the same thing. We may have had to do a little more, but I also wanted those students to walk away with something tangible because I knew this. If, if, if Crumb knew how to build a house, then I could teach them algebra. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Um, and somebody like Danny, I can teach him straight geometry, straight algebra. He doesn't have to necessarily have the tangible to go to conceptual. But a person like me and you, we may have needed to build a house first. And I give my parents a lot of money. They, they, they spent some money, you know, they almost went broke, but they put me in a, in a Maria Montessori school. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. so I grew up in elementary and a little, yeah, elementary school. And so, you know, I set my own curriculum. You know what I'm saying? And if I needed to spend more time on a particular subject, I spent more time on that subject. If I needed less time on a particular subject, I spent, and I made that decision. Now, you know, sometimes I made some bad choices, but I also learned from those choices as well. I wish that we could have a school system that provided everyone with such a robust experience because it helped me handle not just, you know, learning curriculum, but it helped me to later on in my life run a business. You know, when I got fired. I didn't know you went to a Montessori school. I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't yeah, know that. yeah. Um, I didn't know. New York. I went to Maria Montessori in New York, and then when my family moved to Columbus, Ohio, I went to the uh, Montessori School in Columbus, Ohio. Wow. By the way, I went to the Montessori School in Columbus, Ohio when Roots came out the first time. Oh wow! Wow. <laughs> I gave my teachers hell, and I, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was an interesting time. But the, interestingly enough, they let me express myself. Okay. okay. Now, if I would have done that, when I did that in a public school setting, see the principal, get out to school. You know, yeah, it, 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 I had a hard time going from a Montessori school into a public school. But just imagine if everyone had that same experience in a public school. That's what I would love to be able to, and I know in the school board, I'm not necessarily, because that's, that's really just governance, but mm -hmm. I would love to be able to see that happen, where people, you know, I would, you had a bad experience, Crumb, man, and I, you know, I, I would just love to smack those teachers right now, man. They really did, you just serve, you're one of the smartest people I've met, dude. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, you drop it, dude, you, you drop it, in a nice urban way, and every, you know, I mean, I, I love it, I love it. All right, so my other question is, what would you want to change if you had an opportunity to go take your magic stick and change the schools? What would you do differently? How would you change it? You know, you told me what you wanted to see. What would you want to stop seeing? Um, I noticed that in a lot of our schools, um, and, I'm, and I'm thankful that I'm able to teach in, in a situation where I have a small class size. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, salute you so, as a teacher. So, yes. Yeah, so, like, um, I had that opportunity, and it just – makes classroom management so much easier. Um, again, at the same time, you have to hire more teachers to do this. But the average class, like for example, in the city of Detroit, you know, a couple years ago, they, they had an average class size of 40 students, which is Damn. impossible. This, it's impossible. It's not gonna work, you know. Um, it's, it's not, it's just, it's not gonna happen. You yeah, it's not gonna work. Teach. It's not gonna work. Half those kids are gonna fail. It's just, you know, um, and there's reasons for that, This put this, it's all policy, but you know, for me to change the classroom size so that those students get a more of a right, 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 right. You know, when you have students that have, you know, when you use the VARC assignments, you can who's a visual learner, who's an oral learner, kinesthetic, all that stuff. Like you're able to do that if you have fewer students. So I would like to see, but again, that's something that um, is is several levels up and several levels down. If you have a smaller class size, speaking as an educator. A smaller class size would be better for 
just everybody, you know, so. Magic wand, dude, uh, not the magic stick, but Sam, you got the magic wand. <laughs> Pause, that didn't come out too well. <laughs> <laughs> See, you wanna say some shit like that, they want me to answer seriously. You know my damn nerves. Let me <laughs> I was hoping that I was hoping that we would all miss that 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 that. that hit. That's what I was hoping we would do, right? right. You're not gonna get in trouble on the school board. Are you safe for that magic oh, stick? Uh, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I might get some more votes because I'm not with. All right, let me leave that alone. Um, yeah, um, <laughs> let me. Okay. Um, now you distracting me. <laughs> I would. Say it again, say it again. So from, an from an education perspective, what I would, I had a different, I had different types of teachers. I had teachers who really cared. And I'm not going to say in public school, you don't. But I think that sometimes when you pay more, you get more. And I would love to see a more quality education across the board where redlining didn't exist and it didn't matter where you live that you got access to education that you wouldn't have elsewhere. So I would like to see more robust learning experience and that your learning experience shouldn't be based off of where you live. Hmm. Okay. Crumb, bring us home, bro. Yeah, I, um, I definitely wanted to kind of uh, piggyback off Danny, you know, as far as classroom size, uh, I was taught that, um, each one teach one, you know, and when when a child gets that one on one time, you know, e even if it's just at home, you know, with the parents, but especially with, you know, I'm sorry, not especially, but with the teacher as well. So, uh, you know, for me, I, 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 to a degree, has slipped through the cracks. So a as far as classroom size, I definitely know how, how it feels to be overlooked and, you know, to have that question and not feel confident enough to ask it. The, the other portion that I think is critical that I would love to see, especially with our boys, is to, uh, to, to learn at your own pace. And, you know, um, my son, um, when my son was potty training as a, as, as a uh, bear with me, as a fuckboy parent, my son didn't potty train by one, so I was uh, made to feel as if I had to punish him for that when the reality is my son was just like me. There was no issue with him learning, but he learned at his own pace. If you don't learn at the pace that the next one learned, that doesn't mean that you're dumb, smart, or, 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 or whatever. Everybody has their own pace. So, um, you know, what, what I learned as a parent, and, and that's something, I, if, if I had a magic wand, you know, going back even to when I was a child, don't put them on pills, don't uh, 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 hold them back per se or whatever like that, but allow everybody to feel confident to learn at their own pace. So if I had my Mary God, uh, a fairy godfather, I wouldn't make any, you know, anybody feel stupid because at, at that point in time, because I didn't grasp as fast as, you know, the, uh, my, my female counterpart did, I was made, you know, okay, well, we're going to put him in a dumb class. Uh, you know, because those things work on your psyche. So um, magic wand, class size, class size, and to, you know, stop making everything so cut and dry. If you don't get, get it within six weeks, that's not an issue. You know what? I agree. That would be my magic wand, you know, uh, piece as well. Because I would love to see three options. The regular four-year graduate from high school. I would also like to see a three-year graduate from high school and a five-year graduate from high school without the school being penalized okay. for it. All right. For this reason, if my son had another year, see, my son was intellectually gifted, but he was emotionally, I don't want to say arrested development, but it took him a little longer emotionally. And so our freshman, his freshman, I, no, actually, it was our freshman and sophomore year because we went through that baby together. Um, uh, until his middle of his junior year, where we struggled, as intelligent as my son was and as gifted as he was in elementary and middle school, he didn't want to study. He thought he knew everything. He was so shocked that everything wasn't falling in place for him. And I really want to say he was uh, going through a, a, a shell shock and just didn't realize why, what, and, you know, kind of blamed us because I was always on his back and I was trying to teach him stuff. And he's like, I ain't listening to you you know, midway through his senior year, I mean, through his junior year, and now through his senior year, he's listened to some of the strategies and the accommodations and the other things that I would teach him, and he started using it. Now he's, you know, he's doing well. 
his senior year. So his GPA isn't as high as we'd like it to be his senior year. But if I could have given him one more year, 4.0. And the students, when I was, you know, a SPED teacher, if I could have given some of those students six years, 4.0. Now, the school system wants people to come out in four years, four years and you're done, and you actually get, um, you incentivize if you're able to get a whole lot of students to come out in four years. I understand it's a financial thing, but it tells me that we're putting the money over the educational level. Because if I know that you're- You know, and you know Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, um, Crum, your analogy on the potty training is, um, you know, I, as an educator, I never thought about that. Like I have four kids, they all potty trained, they all learn differently. And at different, you know, one took eight months, one took a year and a half, one, you know what I'm saying? And I never thought about applying that to education, you know. And I and it's funny because parents will tell me, "Hey, how you know how long does it take my child to get potty trained?" I was like, "I don't know, you know. That's that's <laughs> your child. I really can't tell you, but I don't see why I didn't apply that to like education. Like, you know, everybody learns at a different pace, different levels. It doesn't mean that this one is dumber or this one is smarter. This is that everybody learns differently. And 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 your, to your point, Seiko, you can actually drop out. Of, you know, I'm not I'm not recommending this. You could drop out of high school, get your GED. And then go to college later, and they're not even going to trip on the GPA, right? They're so, not, you know, so, so, yeah, but you made a good point, though, you know. And what I would do, like, for instance, I had uh, other family members, and they were like, hey, my son or daughter is not doing so hot, and the teacher is recommending that we hold him back. And I was like, that's not a hold back. That's just giving them the time that they need. And now, now this student is head of the class, and everyone is like, whoa, where did this happen? It just took that student a little longer. When I was a teacher, I used to tell the parents, all right, drop down the amount of classes they're taking. They'll have an easier time. It might be another semester. And it's only worked with the SPED students, because with SPED students, you know, special education students, they didn't hold them to, you got to get out in four. You got to get out in four. So I would talk to some of my parents and say, hey, look, Drop down the amount of classes. They'll have less pressure. They'll have more time to relax and learn and let them have an easy additional half year and then let them go off. And most of the parents didn't go for that because they were so brainwashed and thinking that they had to do it in a certain amount of time. But the few that did, those students are excelling past students who were straight A students in higher academic, you know, academic situations, you know, going to college or going to training schools, those students are doing better. So we have a minute left. We have a minute left. So uh, let's go out with some uh, last comments on education. Uh, you want to start it off, Dan Therese? We'll end off with Karam Stasher this time. Just real quick, um, just more of our brothers uh, get into education. I just, that's all I, that's all I want, more and more. Okay, okay. Sam? Schools educate, but it's our responsibility as a village to teach our children yes. skills, period. Yep. Teach them about yes. life. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. That's it. Education is a lifelong process. It's not four years, it's not a degree, it's, it's till you die. Education, life. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I'm gonna end, we got 20 seconds. This is my platform. Constant elevation, continuous improvement. I wanna work on things oh and constantly elevate things. And I also want to find things that are working well and continuously improve them. So that's going to be my platform. Yo, stay fly. Peace. Peace, Peace everybody. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, check out Danny's podcast and check out Crunch Snatch's podcast. Sandy